This is video 7 for chapter 20, and at the end of this video, you should be able to calculate a cell EMF for some voltaic cell that would be under what we would call non-standard conditions. Now, just to remind yourself, when you're using values from Appendix E in the back of the book, we are assuming that everything is at standard conditions. And so for solutions, we are assuming that they are one molar solutions. If it's temperature, we're assuming it's 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. If it's a gas that we're dealing with, we're assuming that it's at one atmosphere of pressure. So anything that strays from those conditions that we're defining as standard is considered non-standard. So um, if you look at what we have here in your note packet, we just want to kind of remind you that a voltaic cell is functional as long as it has a positive value for E. We consider it spontaneous when E is positive. But when E reaches zero, we would call that now at equilibrium. And at that point, we would say that we have a cell that is dead. It's kind of like having a dead battery. So when your batteries in your remote stop working, now we know that the cell potential has reached zero. It can't, it can't do what it needs to do anymore. Now, the point at which that will happen is determined by the concentrations of the things that they're using in that rea reaction. So whatever the redox reaction or the voltaic cell is made of, those concentrations will determine when you're going to hit zero. So we're just going to give you this equation. This is called the Nernst equation. And it's not a difficult equation to use. Um, you should see in it that this value of E with the uh, degree symbol is E at standard conditions. This E is the non-standard. So we're going to find E at non-standard by conditions by using this equation. Now you're going to take this number 0 0.0592 and we're going to divide by N, which is just the number of moles of electrons transferred. And then the log of Q. Now Q you might re remember from our chapter on equilibrium. We called it the reaction quotient. And you solve for Q exactly the same way as you do the equilibrium constant K. You take the concentration of all the products to the powers of their coefficients, divided by the concentration of all the reactants to the power of their coefficients. And then we use Q to dec decide if something was at equilibrium or not. So this is how we're using Q in this equation. Now, it's best to just see it actually used because then I think you'll see that it's not as confusing as it might first appear. So, the example that you have in your page says to calculate E. Now, notice that there's no degree symbol, so it's assumed that it's non-standard conditions. And we're given a reaction if we know that the copper ion concentration is 5 molar and the zinc ion concentration is 0 0.05 molar. So, we're looking at non-standard conditions here. And then this reaction is given to us and it's actually giving us a value of the um, E cell as 1.10 volts. So it's telling us what the standard cell conditions or standard EMF is. So I'm going to use that same equation that I have above. So to find E, I'm going to use the standard cell EMF. And I'm going to divide by 0 0.0, or excuse me, I'm going to subtract 0 0.0592 divided by the number of moles of electrons times the log of Q. So let's use this to figure out what we've got. So we already know that the standard EMF was 1.10 volts. So we can plug that in. And then we're going to subtract 0 0.0592 divided by our number of moles of electrons. Now to find what N is, you have to look at the balanced reaction. So if you look at the charges, this goes from a plus 2 down to a 0. The zinc, on the other hand, went from a 0 up to a plus 2. So hopefully you can figure out that what was gained in one reaction was 2 electrons, and that was because it was lost in the other reaction. So the N that we want to use is 2 for 2 electrons. And then we're going to take the log of Q. Now Q is going to be calculated by taking the concentration of the zinc plus ion, which is the 0 0.050 molar, and we would normally put it to its coefficient, but since the coefficient is just a 1, we're just raising it to the power of 1. 
And then we're dividing by the concentration of the copper ion, which was 5 molar. Again, it has a coefficient of 1, so we are just raising it to the first power. So you can use this problem in your math, or you can do the math in this on your own, and hopefully you should get a value of 1.16 volts for the E, the cell EMF under non-standard conditions. So, that leads us to something called a concentration cell. So, in this previous example, we had, we used a voltaic cell like we've used before, but we are operating under non-standard conditions. In this case, a concentration cell, we're going to use the same substance, but with two different concentrations to get the reaction to happen. So, Here's an example problem. We have a cell that has two compartments, each with a nickel electrode, but the nickel concentration, the solution that it's sitting in has two different concentrations. So one of them has a concentration of one molar, which would be considered standard, but the other one is 0 0.001 molar. So because there is a difference in concentration, this is now considered a concentration cell. Okay. So normally, we would say the standard cell potential is zero, because if you looked it up at standard conditions, whatever it is here, the value you could find for nickel in the appendix E would be the same as this nickel, so when you subtract them, they would get a zero. But because this is under, operating under non-standard conditions, it can actually have a voltage. So the driving force is because of the difference in concentrations. We know that oxidation is happening where the, the dilute nickel is, and the cathode is reduction. That is happening where the concentrated nickel is. Okay. So how do we actually figure out what the overall reaction is here? But what we can do is we can just add these two reactions together. And if you keep your arrows lined up, you'll see that the two electrons would cancel, as would the nickel solids. So our overall reaction is to start with concentrated nickel and end with dilute nickel ion. So, if we want to do the math of this, what we would do is we would look up, using the Nernst equation, because that's what will work for non-standard equations or non-standard conditions, we're going to find what this would be. So again, using the formula point E standard minus 0 0.0592 divided by N and then times the log of Q. But this time to find the cell potential, we're going to use the concentration. So we could look up the standard um, cell potential, but we don't need to because it's normally under, when you have the same cathode and same anode, under standard conditions, it would operate under zero volts. Now, if we look at what is our N value supposed to be, see if you can figure out what N should be. But you can see from what I've crossed out that we've crossed out two electrons, so it should be a two. Now, I'm going to look at my overall reaction, this one here. So I want the dilute solution concentration on the top. So the dilute one is 0 0.001, and the concentrated one was 1.0. Both of them are raised to the power of 1. So I'm going to do my math. Using a calculator, I'm going to be able to figure out that this cell will operate with a cell EMF of a positive 0.0. 9 volts. So that difference in concentration actually allows for some voltage to be transferred. Now, one more thing we need to understand before we end the video here, and that's how to relate cell EMF and our equilibrium constant and G, Gibbs free energy. So we know that a cell is at equilibrium when delta G is equal to zero, and also when E is equal to zero. That's the other thing. So if we put that into, um, into the Nernst equation at equilibrium, we end up with the log of K equals NE standard divided by, and this is really should be underneath that, 0 0.0592. I think you guys have that on your sheet. So now, what we're going to do is just, I'm going to actually let you guys solve this problem. With delta G, I want you to find delta G, I want you to find K, and I want you to find E at 298 for this reaction. 
I'm giving you the standard cell potential of 0 0.30 volts, and I'm giving you concentrations of bromine and chlorine ion, as well as the atmospheric pressure or the partial pressure of the chlorine. Now, remember, for K, products over reactants raised to their power, and you can mix the atmospheres and the molarities. That's perfectly okay. I know we didn't do many problems like that when we covered equilibrium, but it actually is fine to do. So first find delta G, then find K, and then lastly find E at these non-standard conditions. And we will go over the answers to this problem in class.